Hello, fellow reason lovers. See, I made a pun already. I think this is getting off to a very good start. Anyway, I um, posted this song called Warm Day a few days ago, and um, I wanted to now give you an overview of how I actually created the song in Reason. And um, I'll be doing this tutorial in Reason 7, because that's the that's the one I have, and a lot of the, the things that... Uh, I used are, are kind of new in Reason 7, but everything could be done in, in later versions where you already have the either with Record and Reason or, or Reason 6 where you have them two, the two kind of combined. So um, let's get to it. I'm gonna first go over the in, in part one, I'm gonna go over the drums, uh, the percussion, and the bass. Um, then I'm going to handle with uh, the kind of background sounds that are going to be the pianos, the synths, the guitars. And in the final parts, I'm going to go over the vocals, mixing and everything, and finally talk about the master as well. So let's get started. Um, the song is ex in itself quite simple. It's um, quite um, similar to just a nice pop track. Um, I wanted to write this summer song, um, talk about my own summer. I mean, as a as a geek of both music and and science and PhD student. I mean, I don't don't go out that often in the summer. So this is kind of a um, song about my feelings towards the summer. So let's start with the drums. I'm gonna play it back to you for a little bit. This is the verse drums. So what I did here was I first played in with my MIDI keyboard the basic kick snare rhythm because I felt like um, I would listen to what I had recorded already with the piano and I thought okay I need I need to feel the rhythm so I just punched in the the kick and the snare and then over it I I played the hi hats and um then because it, it felt good um, but I wanted to add a little bit more groove a little bit more funk into it so I took the the editor out and I added these little uh, ghost notes in between here you can see the volume for them is quite low and um, that really helps I mean it, it, it kind of gives this groove I mean it's the syncopated notes and it gives it a nice little groove if you listen to it Now if I take these ghost notes away, you can see that it's it's quite a bit different. But uh, not as good. Um, then when I move on to the, the chorus of the song, I have here... Um, I, I recorded similarly, but it, it's a bit more busy here, um, except with the kick. I mean, it's more snare-oriented, more hi-hat-oriented, as you can hear. The same, the ghost notes going in the background. Just to give a bit more groove with the syncopated notes. Um, when we get to the solo, I actually have... Uh, you can see here. It's very, very um, thin. Um, the solo part, if you've listened to the song, it's very um, kind of airy. It goes to a different place in the song. I, I guess it, they call it the mid eight or, or whatever. Um, you have the play between the guitar and the bass, and then you want to kind of give room to that. And you also have these background vocals coming in. So the drums themselves are, are quite simple here. Yeah, so you can hear how that goes. And, and I also added um, for this part I added a shaker, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. So I've been working with blocks for, for a lot of the, the song. However, because the blocks will only get you some way there. I mean, you need to add in fills and you can't really add fills into the blocks. So what I did here was I would cut the part that I thought I needed to fill or a crash and add another 
um, note lane into the kind of song structure and then add it in for example you can see here when the intro comes you have the yeah so and you can add in these little different parts here I don't know why that didn't play but anyway so what I what did I use for the drums you can see here I have um, something called BFD core refill and and this is something I, I didn't really um, I didn't like the drums that came with reason 7 originally the, uh, they're very good for uh, different kind of things mostly electronic music or hip-hop music and you can get good samples there don't get me wrong but I felt that for this kind of um, natural more natural sounding drums they fell a bit short and I guess you can buy the the reason drum refill which is really good uh, we, as I've seen from the, the their videos and their sounds but I opted for the BFD core refill firstly because it was a little bit cheaper and I just bought the reason 7 with the balance and secondly, it kind of sounded a bit more edgy. I mean, it doesn't sound as realistic, but it just sounds really, really nice and produced. So I opened up this Biffy AF preset, um, did a little bit of messing around with the buttons here. It's really nice to start off with a preset in most cases. And for the kick, I felt like um, I could have used a bit more low end. Although I saw later that they actually have a little parametric EQ here, not this one, not the kick boost, that boosts the kick in the in the low range. But I felt that there is still something lacking when I was mixing it together with the bass, so I boosted it um, somewhere around 114 hertz, and I got this kind of a really thick kick sound. I can show you with and without the EQ. I'll just solo the drums. So if I take it off, yeah, so it just kind of boosts it up. And I did a fair bit of EQing with um, uh, with the toms as well because I just wanted them to get to a certain type of sound. And I removed some of the boxiness in the drums as well just to I mean the toms are kind of very full sounding drums so uh, here I also did a little bit of uh, mixing I took the hi-hat down because it's it's very kind of um, it goes throughout all of the song and it gets a bit annoying and also I did very f minute changes to the panning because you'd you'd want the toms to kind of roll through the stereo field and so on so this is how I did the drums. Now, in the solo section, because the drums are so thin, I also added in a shaker, which I recorded, and I can I can solo the shaker as well, so you can hear it. Where is the shaker? This, the problem when you have when you have too much tracks is you can't really find them that much anymore. So it just fills out this uh, background and I recorded it in with uh, just playing it next to the microphone. I have this one of these Dunlop egg things here and I'm not that good of a percussionist so I, I did make a few mistakes. Luckily when you double click on a waveform you actually get this really nice quantization tool uh, and you can uh, either just right click and quantize or if you have some changes that need to be made after you can just drag in the the markers which is really nice and and helped me out a lot here because uh, if i would have recorded this try to get it perfect it would have taken a very long time so firstly i only recorded it for the chorus part for the final ending chorus but then i thought well the solo part needs a bit more and and i added it here as well and uh, now the final thing I want to talk about in this part is the bass guitar. So the bass guitar was actually played by my friend Indrak. He sent me the file and I did a little cutting up 
um, he sent me two parts where he said he made a small mistake in the solo part. So after the solo starts, he, he has a second recording here. And you can listen to it here. I just play it back a little bit. So he's he's one of uh, these bass players that does a lot of moving around. I mean, you can hear it in the solo. So the high frequencies are actually very important. Now, it may sound a little bit thin in the bottom end, uh, but uh, uh, really the most important part is that you can actually, it doesn't muddy up the mix uh, and you can hear the actual notes being played. So the recording goes through um, a line six bass amp, and you can hear when he just sent me, it kind of sounds like this, I'll, I'll bypass the effects. So it, it did lose a bit of its low end, however, I cut the low end out near where I boosted the bass drum because that really gives some space for the bass drum. You want to hear the, the kick through it. And then I boosted it after, just right after the bass drum to get some sort of sound there. I didn't do any boxiness cut out here because then you will start to lose the bottom end quite a bit. And, and I did add a little bit of a boost towards around 1.7 kilohertz just to get this nice twangy sound in there and there is a compressor that's set to infinity so it's basically a limiter here in the end and it does um, I guess in most places around 4 or 6 dB of, of limiting just to get the level to be very kind of thorough throughout the mix and um, there's not a lot I did with uh, with um, the mixing in these parts, just get the levels right. Um, I added a few effects to a shaker, so because the shaker itself doesn't sound all that good, I mean, it's just a, a cheap Dunlop egg. I cut out the low end, of course, because you don't want to get any noise or rumble in that area and boosted the high end quite a bit, took out the vocal area or, or kind of the high vocal area from the mix so it doesn't interrupt. Uh, and uh, I added in some reverb that I have here. And I'll talk about the send effects a bit later and some delay. So join me in part two. <laughs> 